Mike again. Yeah. Had a few days off. How are you? Got a weekend away. Good on you. Hot weather again. But, was it, was it uh, nice? It's just right, isn't it, Mark Garrett? Yeah. It's just right for me. Yeah. So I've been busy on this. I've been busy. I can see. I can see. And I think we discussed in one of the previous clips what I might do with this little triangle at the end there. I said I'd fill that in and then cut a little slot in here and backfill that with the epoxy and the wood dust filler. And it's created an arrow effect, a little infill piece there out of a, some sort of mahogany oak type thing. And then a, a line down the centre here in this deck part here, because this, this is what I've been doing, Mark. I've been routing, I routed a rebate into here, so as you can see around here, and then I've been custom fitting this. There's a lot of filing and, uh, not filing, uh, sanding and, and band sawing and so on to make that fit lovely. So that'll get bonded in. And then on this side in here, Mark, I'll just remove that part, that's the handle, I'll show you that in a second, is this little bulkhead piece here with a hole in. Oh, hang on, Okay. Uh, this is going to go. This this piece goes in here. So this will be an airtight void, a uh, little access hatch on the inside of it here to enable it to get in and out, which is a watertight seal. So it acts as a little bit of storage and also buoyancy, because uh, often canoes need a bit of buoyancy. And if they go over, it helps them float. And it's easy to turn back over and things. So uh, there's one at each end there. I'll show you the other one in, in a bit. And uh, yeah, that, that part went in before, the skeg doubler, which uh, Mark showed in a previous part four, I think it was. And then this is the handle. So this has uh, been shaped and cut and fit. Thing about a canoe, Mark, is there's not a straight edge on it. Everything has to be custom angled. Even this handle, every angle on there was custom cut and plain. <laughs> anyway, um, I've, I've been eco here. I've used some reclaimed timbers, right? There's a couple of bits of holes in here. Uh, and, and then that gets bonded in, screwed in there and bonded in, they thwart in the centre and it's exactly the same on the other end mark. So this is getting perilously close to finished mark. It looks um, like it. Look in terms it. of construction anyway. The seat's going to go, there are not many final decisions about the seat. I might even leave it as late as having the boat on the water, working out where my weight is and how it sits and then fitting the seat. So I'll make a little temporary stool and check it. Or I yeah. might just go fit and put, put it in where the, where the uh, book recommends that they put it. So the next step, Mark, is to bond these parts in. You can see it on the other end in a replica of what I've just shown you there. I'll use this same fillet technique here around, around this part here, Mark. So I'll run a fillet around there to seal that really tight. I'll use the same epoxy inside this joint here so that will be epoxied in tight so there won't be any chance for any water to get in there. It will be sealed as well, of course, but uh, and a bit of epoxy on these parts here to hold them in place. Uh, and that's basically what I should see done today, Mark. Well, anyway, yeah, yeah. and that, that's the thwart in the middle. Mark, um, I, I don't know if it is a thwart, I think it's a thwart. I think a thwart's a part that holds the boat apart. And if it's a yoke, it's shaped to carry it on your on shoulders. shoulders. Yeah, um, and and if, it just, if it just spreads the boat apart, but if somebody knows better than me, they'll have to post something in the comments about what it's actually called. I definitely know that this part's called a handle. I'm all right with that. <laughs> I think that's a fairly universal term for something yeah. you pick up. And then again, it's end mark. So again, slightly different. It was a bit frustrating. It had to be custom made at each end. So there's a lot of filing and shading because it's a lot harder to put it back on than it is to take it off. So um, I've got that. Uh, you're going to do yeah, same filler. again on there. I'll, I'll put a little bit of a that masking tape on there. Fill that up with this same brown adhesive, and then and then when it's dry, I'll round the nose there, and I'll also route a radius on these sharper edges, that one, that one, and that one will be radius with the router. But I won't do that until I've planed all these, uh, the top of these gunnels smooth. So uh, there we are, Mark. I'll it's hit the other end. Boat. We're just going to try a bit of weight lifting, shall we? Just yeah, to see. Okay, I've got this, hold on, my finger's in the way. Ready, three, two, one. It's, but it's, that's one handed, isn't it, Mark? It's easy. That's really light, isn't it? For a canoe, I'm impressed with how light it is. Brilliant. Easy carry that some Sometimes I have bigger canoes than me, full of stuff. There's big plastic ones, and it's nearly pulled my shoulder off. But yeah. I think we'll be all right with this one, Mark. That's great. We'll wait to see the. We're gonna, we're gonna have the maiden voyage together, Mark. Yeah, and the frigid product will be great, won't it? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you better add, mate. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. All right. all right, mate. Cheers. Well, as I'm still here, I might as well, you might as well talk me through what you've just done in the last hour. Well, yeah, Mark's been uh, working away in a bit of wood somewhere for, for another project. Yeah. Endless projects, Mark. We always do. But, um, I bonded it in now, Mark. It's in now with the epoxy. It looks a bit tatty, but it's going to get belt sanded across the top, so any excess will just be sanded clean. The end's been filled there, uh, and that'll get cleaned up. Uh, I've made sure I've pushed plenty of epoxy, sat in epoxy, pushed it down there, so that'll all get belt sanded up nice and, uh, it nice looks and tidy. Like you still used your epoxy with... 
Yeah, with the sword of sin, I did. Yeah, yeah, to give it a bit of colour. I might have got away without, but um, it'll it'll give it the sort of wood type tone. I mean, that that front arrow there is is the epoxy with sword of sin, and, and this will set a little bit paler in colour, but it's all that kind of tone that you'd expect. I've been around and filled a little bit of the grain where it was open on the plywood yeah. with it. And I what, bonded these in here. What are they called again? Uh, I think I think the technical name for them is a handle. 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 How do you say it? Handle. handle. Okay. Handle. H a n d l e. L e, not e. Uh, he was a bloke who wrote me. Now, uh, and this is in Mark. I have little bits of filler because, as I said, there's a reclaimed wood, so I've used some of that epoxy stuff in the holes, the little screws that were there. That's screwed and blue now. And down the other end is the same, so you can see the. I've used the slightly smaller fillet tool, so it's got a smaller fillet in, but that's filleted ah. all the way around there now. So that that's going to be watertight, and it's bonded in around the top here. Of course, there's plenty in there, so that's also a watertight. With seal. your bonding, you used a was it cake? No, a piping bag. Piping I'll bag. show you. You stay there, Mark. I'll come straight back to the piping bag. There you go. Works a treat. Um, so yeah, just just stuff it in. Stuff it into the piping bag. There's one that I've used. That's that's one that we're the unused. Use. Just put it in. Nip the end off. And then you, I think you saw it on yeah. whatever it was. Just, set of clips, just, two or three. Yeah. Just squeeze it, and it goes in beautiful. Cut a small hole if you want a little bit out, or a big one if you want more. Piped it in. Scraped it round. Got the masking tape on where most of the excess is sat on the masking tape. I'll give it a bit of a sand and a tidy up. But there's seal right there around there now. And of course there's underneath and in the sides of this joint in the rebate there. It's full of it. And I've squeezed a little bit more and so on. So that, that'll all get sanded up beautifully when it's so done. So you don't right. want to pull that out and show us what you've done inside that, do you? <laughs> Not at this point, Mark. <laughs> Not that the epoxy's gone off anyway. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Let's see if we're going to have a look inside, shall we? Oh, that's the little void in there that uh, he's going to you see the epoxy on the inside of there squishing out where it's pushed in so I know that's a nice tight seal around there brilliant that's it then yeah lovely well, mark that's so it. we'll take it home tomorrow I think so it might be the last time we see it in the workshop okay so the next so time we we'll see it next clip I think we'll see what sanding finishing tidying and then Varnish on the inside, paint on the outside. I did get some paint off. I don't know if we showed you the paint yet. This is the stuff I got that we've discussed. Quite what it might have been the right type of paint. Now this is this is the boat paint. Yeah, this top is top paint. lac. This sort of enamel lacquer type paint. And I got it in a nice bright red. Look oh, nice on the side, wouldn't it, Mark? That looked lovely. And this is super glossy. This one I got for a very very shiny finish on that one there. So that I will I will prime it with an epoxy. Um, at least two coats of the epoxy. Stand it back between coats. And then put some filling in, call it fairing actually in Boat World, and then I'll get sanded back and then painted Mark. Brilliant. Got a visitor, Mark. Look forward to seeing that. Hi, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers.